Me up inside, but I'll survive. Me too. And hello, everyone. Welcome back to Transformers: Fall of Cybertron. So we've just been reunited with our friend Slug, who transforms into a Triceratops. Where is Slug? He didn't even make it out of the caves. Snarl. Last I heard, Shockwave carted him off for extensive testing. Shockwave. was wrong! Alright, Grimlock. You don't seem like it. You. I'm fine. We need to find Snarl. Let's move! I may have an idea where they've taken him. Grimlock, follow me. I'll scout ahead! Swoop! It's funny how often this happens in video games, where you have, like, a partner and they go off and then something breaks or like the path gets blocked so you can't actually follow them so you have to split up. Just the lengths they'll go to avoid having to put in an AI partner. Lab report 1166. A second heavily armored defense weapon might be inspired by this strangely armor-spined creature. Attempts are underway at present to fashion a true beast of burden through extensive manipulation of the Autobot Snarl source code. So here's a fun fact, uh, Slug was originally called Slag in the original cartoon. They had to change the name after they realised that Slag was a derogatory term here in, here in the UK. It's basically a word used to describe a slut or something. So yeah, basically don't call anyone a Slag, they might take offence to that. Slug, look out! Those things are tough! I wonder how many times we've like activated computer terminals just by hitting them with our sword or throwing something against it. I mean, I'm, I'm not like a huge expert on computer hacking, but I don't think a sword is normally involved in the process. Taking fire! Hold on! I've got an idea! So here we're reintroduced to the Insecticon spitters. They're the ones that just fly and fly in the sky and just spit at you. They're the ranged Insecticons. Although uh, it's not really an issue for Grimlock because he can pick up barrels and throw them. Easy. Boy, it's a good thing there's an explosive barrel dispenser right here. You don't have to use explosive barrels, you can use other Insecticons. So we're kind of getting back to the original plot point that was introduced, you know, in the very beginning of the game, where the Autobots were trying to escape the planet that's slowly dying, and uh, you know they were trying to escape through the uh, the space portal. And I, I guess that's a brief recap of what we know of so far: is that uh, the the tower was built by the Ancients, and uh, the Ancients were planet explorers. They were intergalactic space travelers or something. And one of the many planets they found was Earth, and Shockwave found Earth and found out it was full of energy, which is why they're going there to basically steal all the energy from Earth. Because that's how it works now. 
Also, while Shockwave was probing this planet, he happened to stumble across dinosaurs and thought, man, wouldn't it be great if I had some robot versions of these? So he decided to create the Dinobots, and this ended up perhaps being his worst decision he's ever made. Oh, I'll just create robot dinosaurs out of Autobots! What could possibly go wrong? Um... Where are the insects? No, seriously, what the hell? Where, where, where are the insects? I mean, there's plenty on where Slug is, but uh, he's just dealing with them by himself, and you can't really go up in there and kill him. Uh, I guess we'll just go back to where we came from, I suppose. I mean, there's an objective marker over there. Oh, there's one Insecticon stuck in the corner. Okay, now the game's continuing. Must have been a weird glitch. Oh well, it's time for stomping! As you saw briefly at the end of the last part, you can now transform into a T-Rex. In order to transform, you have to build up your rage meter, which you earn by killing enemies. In dinosaur mode, you're a lot more powerful. Your attacks are super strong, and you can kill people just by running. You have your melee attacks, which are super powerful, and you also have a flamethrower for a little bit of range, so now those spitters are easy to burn. You can't block attacks with the shield, but it seems like you have a lot more health and defense when you're in dinosaur mode. And of course you still have your old execution moves to recover your health. Now of course dinosaur mode is super powerful, but it doesn't last forever. Once you run out of rage, you go back into robot mode. Now uh, in order to build up your rage, you have to kill enemies, or you can throw enemies at these weird orange barrels, which contain, I guess, their rage crystals? Yeah, you collect the crystals and your rage meter goes up. I don't quite understand crystallized rage, but that's how angry you can get, apparently. You mean cesium salami? No, beryllium baloney! Cesium salami! That was a line from Transformers the Movie. Exact line taken from Transformers the Movie. Do you get it yet? Do you get it? We, we're Transformers fans, guys. We watched the oh movie. You fucking Jesus, enough with the references! I'm sorry, sometimes I feel like they're overdoing it with the references sometimes. Like, how is cesium baloney at all relevant to anything? I don't know, it seems a bit careless when they just take lines from the movies without any real context. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is I'm a bit concerned as to where Beryllium Baloney fits with the Transformers canon. Lab report 1163. Spitter. The name says it all. The most direct and simple combination of this series of experiments. After discovering a flying, lightweight, insecticon-like creature in the wilds of the target planet, only slight source code modifications were necessary to optimize new species for combat and reconnaissance. And that's actually the last tape cassette in the game. So now we have all the tape cassettes. I got this. Slug, wait up! Slug! Tired of this. Time for more computer hacking. With a sword. Yeah, I gotta say, as fun as the Grimlock sections are, I'd argue it's probably the least replayable section of the game. Probably because it's pretty linear and there's not really much in the way of variety. Slug go now. What I mean when it's not much variety, I mean obviously this level is very unique, but you know, it's not like uh, all the other levels where you can sort of choose which weapons you want to use or or like play the game in a different style like each time or something. Here you're, you're basically just limited to hitting things with your sword and that's fine, but you know, after a while once you figure out all the nuances there's not really a lot of challenge to it. I mean I'm on hard mode now and you know, this isn't really a challenge as it were.
I guess if I'm looking for a legitimately challenging game, I'm probably looking in the wrong place, but I don't know, that's just my take on it. I, I never... I, I it was fun when I first played it, but I found that, you know, on repeated playthroughs, I just found the Grimlock sections to be less interesting. Feed. Hungry. Destroy him! Now don't get the wrong idea. Grimlock is really fun to play as, you know, smashing things up as a dinosaur or having a giant sword. It, it's just brainless, explodey fun. Snarl. Is that you? Grimlock, get me out of here! Yeah, that's Snarl! How precious! You've come to rescue your little friend! I've come to tear you apart, Sharp Shot! Okay, you might remember a while ago I said that Grimlock plays a bit like Bruticus. Um, you might remember back when we played with Bruticus I mentioned about a thing called shield cancelling, where you can cancel out of animation by bringing up your shield. That still applies for Grimlock, and the best thing about that is is that you can cancel out of your sword recovery times and basically like just enhance your combo. Like Normally you have like this four hit combo there. It ends with a downward slash, but if you just bring up your shield, you can just cancel out of the recovery for it. So you can basically do an infinite combo by sort of swinging your sword and bringing up your shield the moment the last hit goes in. And then you can also shield bash, so you can basically extend the combo. But also you can cancel out of the shield bash recovery by letting go of the shield button. So you can basically do a, a full combo, followed by shield bash, and then immediately go into another swinging combo. Your combo will never have to end and you'll be basically untouchable. This is kind of cheap, it's cheating the system a little bit. But it is kind of funny once you find this out. Like you could just bash all these Insecticons and they can't get anywhere near you. Building. Now the reason why Grimlock can't transform at will, unlike all the other Dinobots, is because uh, Shockwave programmed in some kind of inhibitor code that prevents him from transforming. I guess it's supposed to be a method of control because he's the more powerful Dinobot. However, Grimlock is able to overcome this inhibitor by simply building up rage. Now personally, I think this is a bit cheap. I mean, I don't think you can just overwrite programming by being angry, you know? I mean, I, okay, here's the thing. I've been learning how to program recently. I've been learning, you know, Java, C++, you know, hoo-ha, whatever. The point is, is that every now and again I come across a problem, and no matter how many times I yell and rage at a piece of code that won't compile, or whenever I get a runtime error, or anything like that, or some kind of exception, being angry doesn't fix it. I've tried, I really have. I've, like, growled angrily at my computer. I've just glared at it, putting on an angry face as long as possible. Nothing works! So, I don't know how Grimlock does it. If, if there's some kind of secret to it, I'd wish Grimlock could tell me. Because I would love to be able to overwrite programming by being angry. Because, frankly, when code doesn't work, I get pretty angry. Hello, Bruiser. Goodbye, Bruiser. You know, always keep my dinosaur mode handy for that bit, because otherwise you have to fight the Bruiser the normal way by hitting its butt. Much quicker just to eat it as a dinosaur. So we're trying to rescue our friend Snarl. Uh, Snarl is the Stegosaurus. Sharp Shops is electrocuting our friend Snarl. We've got to destroy these electrical generators before Snarl dies. However, you can only destroy the generators in dinosaur mode, so you got to build up that rage. Don't 
in dinosaur mode, your attacks are pretty strong, but you have a lot of recovery time. Uh, but you can just negate that recovery time completely by dashing. So yeah, you can kind of abuse that to attack faster than you normally would be able to. So Sharpshot was one of the original Insecticons, and one of his defining characteristics is he likes to torture people with electricity. In the original cartoon, I think a lot of his weapons were electricity-based. I can't help but feel that Sharpshot is getting off on all this. Like, he's enjoying this a little too much, you know? Just gotta say, it... I mean, I don't want to, like, shame him for, like, any, his particular turn-ons. I mean, it, to each his own, I suppose. I mean, I'm guilty of, you know, indulging in certain unorthodox pleasures, which I, I'm reluctant to share with people. I, I guess the other thing is that he's sort of being a bit upfront with it, you know? I mean, if I were to sort of... I mean, it's, it's fine having particular kinks, but... You have to be aware it might make people uncomfortable if you're being in a, a bit inappropriate with it as all. Well. There's a time and a place is what I'm saying. Seriously sharp shot, tone it down a bit. I mean if you were like doing this in private I wouldn't mind, but Christ, you're in company here. Gotta turn into dinosaur mode, gotta blow up these rage canisters. I'm now sufficiently angry for dinosaur mode. Stop, Grimlock. We need to find some place to patch him up. This will do. Snarl is leaking bad. Find something to stabilize him. Nice. There, Snarl. That'll hold you for a bit. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so after that huge climax, we need time to sort of calm down a little bit. So let's have another room where you can look at computers and listen to audio logs and whatnot. Sludge. Must have been Shockwave's design for him. Guess we all have new forms. We need a new name. What did Sharpshot call us? Uh, Dinobots? What's a Dinobot? Quiet. Keep searching. Well, they don't know what a Dinobot is, but that's not going to stop them from naming themselves that. But yes, you might remember Sludge. He was the unfortunate Dinobot we found when we were playing as Jazz. And now he's dead. Our target world displays early forms of carbon-based life, both botanical and reptilian. So wait, the only animals you could find on Earth were plants and lizards. Good job, Shockwave! Should be glad you decided to create the Dinobots and not, say, I don't know, the Plantobots or something. Oddly, the target world's surface is not composed of metal. Most of its ore lies closer to its hot magma core. Just in case you haven't caught up on the hint yet, they're talking about planet Earth. Of course, they never call it planet Earth, because why would they know the name of the planet? Access denied, stupid door! Warning, test subject at large.
Shockwave's log. Now that the Nemesis is ready for launch, Megatron can proceed with his exploration of the target planet. Shockwave. This primitive world is quite volatile. Its surface teems with volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. My tests have shown this carbon design has proven to be remarkably resilient to blunt trauma. It withstood testing for better than 700,000 megacycles before expiring. So you punched a dinosaur until it died to see how long it would last. Great, thanks. Early diagnostics show this carbon design would make an acceptable ramming device. The three horns atop the head would also allow the creature to skewer its opponents with relative ease. You know what else would make a decent ramming device? A car! This particular carbon design is very different from the others. Its wingspan grants it impressive flight capability. Not unlike some designs I've seen in ancient Cybertronian archives. Now this is actually kind of interesting because it implies that there once was life on Cybertron that was similar to the dinosaur. Hmm. Though physically powerful, this form lacks any intelligence to pose a threat to Decepticons. However, it has also proven to be among the most vicious of those that I've researched. My aim is to merge its design with one of my Autobot test subjects. Yeah, that's sort of based off the perception that dinosaurs had tiny brains, therefore they must have been really stupid. I, I don't know how true that is, though. The Space Bridge Portal will save valuable Energon resources by warping the essence of space itself to bring the planet within reach. Tired of this! Shockwave log 7723A. The target planet is rich with raw energy, but also infested with primitive carbon-based life forms. Okay, I think that's all the little terminals examined. I think we can now continue with the story. Again, the reason why Grimlock and his team went missing was because, uh, because he actually suspected Shockwave was up to something, and it turns out his hunch was entirely correct. Uh, I don't think I have a none button on my keyboard. I'll have to maybe check. Slug, I didn't give you permission to do this. Grimlock, you're Shut up, alive. Slug. We feared the worst. Are you all right? Shockwave is opening a space bridge to another world, rich with energy. We cannot allow Megatron to plunder another world the way he has Cybertron. For once, we agree. Return to base. We will face this together. You're weak, Optimus. You run when you should fight. I'm taking the space bridge down. Grimlock, wait! This whole place is coming apart! Take Snarl. Get out of here. I'll lower the blast shield. It's too dangerous! Go! I'm gonna activate the shields by hitting this computer panel with my sword, as usual. Wait, hey, wait, no! That was my job! I was supposed to do that! Okay, we're playing a swoop now, and he's carrying Grimlock. Uh, he controls pretty much the same as any other jet or flying transformer. He's a bit like, you know, it's no different from controlling Starscream. Now these things are out of control! Sprout! Shoot it! Ha! You need to 
Uh, they don't seem to be doing much to this bruiser, so let's just leave him alone. He's not bothering anyone anymore. I I'd like to apologise for the fact that there are actually two objective markers on screen. Um, for some reason an objective marker earlier in the game didn't go away and now we're just seeing it. it it's just sort of stuck there, so don't get confused with the fact that there are two objective markers. Only one of them is real. This glitch doesn't normally happen. With his tiny ass wings, it doesn't really seem like Swoop should be able to support Grimlock's weight, but then again, he does have rocket boosters, so. Swoop's mortar bombs actually fire in bursts. You can fire three at a time, so they're pretty powerful. Apparently we just knew that Shockwave was up here, but yeah, sure, let's go with that. Hey look, shotgun guys, you haven't met them in a while. Oh, they even have a unique execution animation. You just chop their heads off like a golf swing. I'm surprised they haven't used the shotgun troopers more. I mean, they're close range fighters. You'd think they'd be ideal for a guy like Grimlock. But okay, <laughs> apparently he didn't want to fight me. Interesting that the entire game pauses while you're doing execution on someone. They just stand there and watch you do it. Now this seems a bit lazy to me, just introduce Leapers and upscale them a bit so you can fight them as Grimlock. I mean Leapers aren't even that much different from Bruisers, so you could have just used those, then you, you wouldn't have to like upscale the Leapers. It doesn't even make sense, why would you have some Leapers bigger than others? I don't know, it just seems weird to me as all. So yeah, um, if you don't remember, they're, they're weak on the back, so you just have to hit them from behind after they charge at you or something. Alternatively, you can just turn into a dinosaur. Because once you do that, you can do the execution kill on them and kill them in one hit. Toasty! Nothing like Decepticons on skewers. But yeah, as you can see, turning into a dinosaur just makes these fights pretty trivial. Like, you don't even have to fight them, you just. Chomp! Now I still have a good deal of rage meter left, but I think I'll turn back into robot mode for now because I, uh, basically, um, there's a reason. 
I'll take this. There we go, got an achievement. You get an achievement for hitting a Decepticon Leaper midair with the barrel as Grimlock in this particular chapter. You see, this is what happens when you don't sort of make your enemies accommodate for the giant bottomless pits on the outside of the level. You didn't think I'd build something so powerful such as you, and not have a way to control it. Now, sit there like a good pet while I finish my work. Megatron, I have successfully opened a bridge to the target world. The portal Kill is stable you. and ready for you. Excellent, Shockwave. Trypticon's conversion into the Nemesis spaceship is now complete. We will be launching for the portal shortly. I want you to stay behind to manage things on this end. As you wish, Megatron. No one controls Grimlock! Impossible. Gotta get out of here quickly. Good thing this T-Rex has jet boosters on his back. Nope, excuse me, out of the way! Beep beep, coming through, I'm a dinosaur. Yeah, it's too bad none of the Decepticons can escape. You know, it's not like they can, oh, I don't know, transform into a plane and fly away or anything. Oh, hello, civilian. Energon to even get us to the space bridge. This is my choice. the end of chapter 12. See you guys next time for the final chapter, chapter 13. You slags.